Well, the first racetrack to ever host a Gridlife Touring Cup race and continues to host them into 2023, five years from when Gridlife Touring Cup first began. Welcome back to Mid-Ohio. We have the MR2 here for its first GLTC weekend. So we're gonna tune the Civic to make 206 wheel horsepower to meet the class rules. We did a test event two weekends ago and it was slow, but it was reliable. Now we've changed a bunch of stuff, so it might be slow and unreliable. We'll see. I know kind of how Ben felt uh, his first GLTC weekend. It's insanely stressful. Uh, you're worried because you're going to go out and do some pretty serious wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, and you just don't want anything bad to happen. You don't want to make a mistake. I'm going to try and just keep it extremely clean and not worry about proving anything. Uh, I don't need to feel like a really good driver. To help reduce my stress a bit and also see his creation in action, Mark from Frankenstein Motorworks has come out for the weekend to help around the paddock. We want it to make 220 right now on pump gas, and then on E85, we would like it to make 230, but we're just checking 93 right now. All right, first practice session. We're gonna go feel out the track, see how the balance of the car is. Since we didn't have a proper testing session at NJMP, we gotta basically test it all in this one session here. Hopefully the car works, and we'll be good to go qualifying. So I'm supposed to be going to grid right now for practice and instead I'm sitting on the dyno not allowed to dyno because there's a drift meeting going on since it's more important to get some practice laps than dyno the car I unstrap and head out for the track but I have no idea how far off pace I'm going to be. Oh my gosh, this could not be more stressful. <laughs> I ran the Civic here for the first time in 2022 for Time Attack, and while the car is a bit different in GLTC trim, all of the experience of getting a podium here last year is really helping out. I've only ever driven my 400 horsepower Evo at Mid-Ohio. The MR2 couldn't feel any more different, and everyone in GLTC is so quickly on pace, now is not a time to be lacking confidence. I feel like I've never driven and I'm running 150s, so there's no, yeah, I, I just need to get weighed and figure all this shit out. Dash broke. Great. Pressure. Okay, my dash turned off after lap two. It just blinked, and then it turned back on, and then it blinked off, and it was never on the whole time. So we got a power feed to the dash issue. I hate you. It's always an electrical issue with him. And not an easy one. Fix one thing and then you break another. Yep, it's probably my fault. It, it more than likely is your fault. Yep. It's something, it's something power-wise. You're, you're not allowed to touch any more wiring on this car. Oh man, you, you did good. Yeah. You were like 41. 39, 41, and I think 39 again. Thankfully, the dash not having power was simply not plugged in. So Mark plugged it back in and we're good to go. We just finished weighing the car and with Ben in there, it's 2,800 pounds exactly. And we're about to put it up on the dyno to see what the, the actual measured power at the track is. And we can make sure all those things are right. So we have the best power to weight ratio for the class.
185. Okay. So, how much horsepower did you say? Uh, 189 on that last pull. 189? Yeah. We need to check see if it's this dyno that's reading low or if there's something that needs to be tweaked in the tune. Yeah. But either way, you're about 550 pounds too heavy. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, 30 horsepower down on what I was last year. Right, right, right. So, I think we're going to take half the gym out of there. Yeah. <laughs> you want to get a pump on real quick? I really don't want to take Thank the you. ballast weight out just because of how well it handles with the ballast weight. And yeah. we've, we found that out at JMP. Despite our best efforts, we cannot find a mechanical or tune related issue that would be causing the MRS to lose 30 horsepower from when we dynoed it last year. The difference in dynos could account for some of the loss for sure, but 30 horsepower is pretty drastic. So for the rest of the weekend, we'll just be running the car around 2,500 pounds, the most we can remove and 189 horsepower, the most we can make. Not ideal. Horsepower, man, get the case lost. Oh, no, that, that thing's got plenty left in it. Oh, yeah? It, it does. Like it. Uh, and it's, it's gonna walk all over your K. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 30 horsepower is like night and day. Like, we're not even oh, yeah. close. It yeah, can't... no, no, we're not even close. So, I am confused. Yeah. I'm confused what's going on. Look, dude, we were two seconds from you. I don't know what you did. Two seconds? Yeah, I mean, you cheated or something all of a oh, sudden. Oh, my outlap? Yeah. You were two seconds off my outlap? <laughs> 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 For what it's making, it is running right. So even if we don't figure it out, you can still run this this weekend. I, I feel comfortable. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You can't tell me what's going on. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. 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 It's, dude, the warm-up lap is the hardest part. Getting those rear tires warm is, is tough. They just started their flyers. They're done. I'm, I'm gonna hang out for like seven or eight minutes and just try and go out once some of them once come in. Once you see some of okay, dissipate. Yeah. Yeah, do it, do whatever you want. The deficit of speed is so ridiculous. I'm no, I'm not, I can't keep, I can't get a single lap without getting past. The car feels like dog with the changes. It's like, so humiliating. I heard you took the ballast out. Yeah. How did it feel? Uh, fing horrible. Terrible? Yeah. Qualifying went pretty well. Um, my car has still got a lot of rotation, but I think rotation's fast and I just gotta get comfortable with it. Uh, to warm up the rear tires, I am pulling the e-brake on the straights even just to try to get temp in the rear. I'm really worried that my tires aren't going to be up to temp by the time lap one happens and I'm just going to get walked all over on the race start. I've never been in a field where I'm being dominated so heavily. I've never been like the slowest guy and it's like the next closest car is like four seconds ahead of me. I've never had less fun at the racetrack, truly. Now I'm going to go out for the first race and start from the very, very back. 
and see if we uh, see how many laps it takes for us to get lapped, because we are going to get lapped. at Watkins Glen earlier this year, this is my first GLTC race in the dry, and it's a whole different kind of stress. There's so many cars here, and everyone is constantly jockeying for position, and the proximity is insane. And still, nobody having a problem, although that one car, oh, and some smoke coming out of Coutil's car. What a shame. It's like right from Davis. Yeah, a driver that we really thought was going to be in here with an opportunity. Starting from the back of the field, proximity is not the problem for me. Without much pace, I just watch the field gap me lap after lap while I keep last place, another rookie, behind me. Yeah, the field is big here, and there's a, a fairly large disparity here this weekend, and that certainly could throw a wrench in the mix here. The lap traffic. Run your line, let the leaders deal with you, but that can definitely cause an issue here. An insane race. Uh, so started P17, but when the green flag went, I didn't, I didn't really miss the jump too bad. But I think, I think one car got by me, maybe two. So only losing one position on the race start is a win in my book, considering Watkins Glen was like 10 cars. So progress is progress. Uh, yeah, we'll see if maybe we can jump somebody on the race start for once, but we'll work up to it. It's, it's a pretty big shock to go from winning like every time attack event I would go to and like setting class records and whatever and then like doing endurance racing and performing very well there to now being really, really humble. It's tough to continue to think like it's okay, you're not like a terrible driver. When you're so far off pace, the initial thought is like this is because I am extremely slow. He's got some mojo happening. He certainly does. And Ben Ford starting 15th, his best starting position in only his second round. Being in the top 20 is a great place for him to yeah, start. It should be a lot of fun to watch him work his way forward. There's Ben. Three, there's the green flag. And green flag flies racing at GLTC. A nice launch down to turn four. Three wide lead at Jim King Tornstad side by side. Seth Gale at the exit at turn six, the 541, that's a bad spot there, Greg. Yeah, that's a, if he can't get moving, that's definitely going to have to be a caution. As there's the full course yellow display, Greg, full course yellow, the first of the race, as the safety car will be deployed. This will be our white flag lap here. I think we're behind schedule yeah. a little bit and have to make up some time, so we will end at the scheduled distance. So uh, with 17th place, Ben Thorne from the Gears and Gasoline crew with the Advanced Auto Parts uh, Honda Civic. Uh, that is his career best finish as well, I believe now. So 17th place for him, nicely done. Oh, that was a run. That was a heckin' race. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got the live stream going, so now I can actually watch you. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a shame about the safety car at the end. I, think I could have made at least one more pass. Well, race two ended a little bit shorter than we planned, but it was a fantastic race. I had a lot more proximity that time. We went side by side in a lot of spots on the track. Um, definitely getting more comfortable with proximity with other cars. I mean, everybody's pushing 10 tenths, and it's like nobody's giving any room. You pretty much just have to wait for somebody to make a mistake. But we still got two more races left to give it a shot. We'll see what we can do in race three. 
I wasn't in race two because, and this is embarrassing to admit, I just missed it. It was probably a nice mental break for me anyways, and I pull up to the back of the grid for race three, ready to try and do better than last time. I am in grid for race three. I missed race two, guys. There's Ben, way up there. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. <laughs> race three, though, of the weekend of the goal. An ultimate race of Grid Life Tour Cup. Matt Wilbon, problem of the start as we go racing. I make my first legitimate pass in GLDC on my fellow rookie, the similarly off-pace Acura TL, and a safety car helps bring me up to the back of the field. Trouble for the 52, he is driver's left entering turn 11, and that will probably draw a full course yellow Greg. The quicker we get that out also, the quicker we can restart this race. Well. Once the green waves, we are racing again, back underway at Mid-Ohio, nine minutes to go in GLTC race number three. I lose a position on the restart, and I have to start chasing down the green S2000 to get the place back. better than uh, yesterday. I managed to stay with the back of the pack and in fact made three passes. Two of those passes were as a result of them spinning out and I became so fixated on them almost running into each other that I came to a complete stop but I did improve my lap time by like a second and a half so now I think I'm right down to the lap time I need to run to actually be the back of the pack which is so embarrassing. Well, race three, I'm starting to get into a rhythm. We're getting very consistent. I actually went faster than my qualifying lap uh, in race three, so the track conditions are getting better. It seems that I always have a gap behind me, but then I'm always stuck with the car in front of me, so I still gotta work on that a bit. And we had a restart from another safety car, and in that restart, the car behind me had a radio, so his crew told him when the flag was green before I knew the flag was green, because I couldn't see it, and he jumped me on the restart. Also car has been working flawlessly all weekend but now that i've said that i gotta knock on some carbon fiber um we have one more race to do but the car has been awesome i gotta bring a car back so that we can actually work on improving it that's right and we might as well just keep on bringing this one back <laughs> and it's here it's now it's gltc race four from mid ohio sports car force green flag and we're racing once again a big wild start midfield there's four rows deep of three wide of the mid pack though as we head down to turn one I'm trying my hardest to catch the Integra ahead of me, but I just do not have the pace to keep up. Luckily, although it is slow, my MR2 is at least reliable, and all throughout the race I pick up places by passing competitors that have broken down or gone off track. A real race of attrition. Left. Oh, spin, slide, and Lena Chin's in the gravel at turn 9. Oh, she had such a fabulous run going. She's trying to get out, she can put the car back in gear. Oh, there's another car there, Adam Ulrich in the, the four. There's the full course yellow, yeah. and the caution is out, and that will likely end this race. There's the safety car back on track again. Oh, there's 
been a continuous trend of improvement, I would say. We went from a 150 in practice to a 143 in the final race. Woo! What a race! <laughs> Obviously this weekend was not ideal for me and the MR2. Part of the issue is being down on power for sure, but the car and myself are also not competitive yet in general. Ben has had three years of continuous development on the Civic for grid life, and this is only the MR2's second grid life event ever. So while I have a laundry list of major changes to make to the car, Ben is just looking for ways to fine tune the Civic. I'm kind of at a loss where I don't really know what to do to bring like the pace down more. It seems like heavier cars are definitely more dominant. So it's like, well, I need to add weight, but then when you add weight, you can add tire, but I can't fit any more tire. I think maybe we just finish out the season improving our race craft. Sure. You know, and like making small modifications to the cars. Personally, like I know that I'm leaving a ton on the table just with the driving. Sure. So in approximately two weeks, we will be at Lime Rock. I don't know how the video release schedule is gonna work, but make sure you're subscribed so that you see when we go to Lime Rock. Mm -hmm. See if see if Ben can maybe get P32, P31. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. work up there. Maybe we'll break into the 20s. What do you think about yeah. that, folks? Stay tuned, subscribe, like, notification bell, uh, comment. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can, click, you can click off now. Yeah, yeah, yeah.